school friends Amy Lee and Ben Moody. Moody is no longer with the band. I have always loved music. Um, my family's musical. My dad played a lot of music when I was, I mean, from being born. Um, and all my sisters and brothers, we all play instruments. So, yeah, uh, it's definitely my passion. But I don't know. I think I could see myself doing a lot of other things as long as it's something where I get to create. Um, that's always what I wanted to do since I was three. Uh, I probably like, got serious about it when I was 13, I guess. Well, I met Ben when I was like 13, so I didn't really make any big career steps before that. But I was writing music. Um, I started writing probably when I was 10 or 11, just piano music and um, kind of horrible recordings on like guitar and vocals with a double cassette player that I had, where you could plug in directly and plug in a micro guitar or whatever. So yeah, I've been doing it a long time. I like all kinds of music. Definitely, I think what's cool about the music that we make is that it incorporates all kinds of things, um, from classical to metal to rock to, I mean, even there's soul in there. So um, even then, like being, I don't know, a young teenager, I really liked a lot of different things that were just sort of um, big, as long as it was like big and passion music. I loved Danny Elfman as a, as a score composer. Um, that was a big influence on me. And um, then also I loved, like I was kind of the grunge era then and I was like really into Soundgarden and those kind of bands. So um, it just sort of naturally came together, but the sound has definitely evolved a lot um, since then. I think if anything, it's just become more and more open-minded for new things and it's grown, I don't know, like appendages. The gigs, but they weren't that, there weren't very many of them. It was more than anything actually um, recording for me when we were starting out. I mean, up until really um, we got our record deal, it was more um, recording in, you know, my parents' garage or basement um, and re-recording and rewriting and playing shows maybe two or three times a year. Two early EPs and the now much sought after Origin album were released locally before a trip to Memphis to master their demos led to them meeting Pete Matthews. I wouldn't call it an EP, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> um, they're really just demos. Um, I would hate for people to really think that that's something that I put out. Um, since we recorded them literally in, in our parents' houses uh, as teenagers. Um, they are demos. And yeah, they got a little bit of airplay in our hometown, you know, I mean, small time. But. We went to Memphis to master the demos and put them in this nice looking package to shop to record labels. And we also sold them at a couple of concerts. Um, so when we were mastering, um, a producer down the hall, Pete Matthews, um, heard us and took it to some labels just sort of on the fly because he was, you know, one Forever. We continued to write for two years after we got signed, which was hard at the time, because we thought we were ready. But um, we wrote probably half the songs on the album um, during that artist development or whatever you want to call it. So um, I, in the end, I think it was a really good thing. You never know what's going to happen um, with music. You can just do your best and love it all you can and hope that other people love it too. So um, the fact that our first album did so well was a big kind of whew, relief and, and happy surprise. Um, you, it's not just like we got lucky though. I mean, we did work really, really hard for a long time. Um, so it definitely felt like, you know, a lot of hard work went to good use and, and we believed in ourselves and it was, you know, for a good reason because it did so well. It was a pretty crazy time uh, touring fall. And, um, a lot happened, a lot for good, a lot for bad. It was just a really kind of just insane time in my life so I don't know that I fully got to appreciate it but at the same time I don't I really don't think it should be that important how many records you're selling it really should be about the music and um, I don't know about how you feel on the inside so um, I don't know I guess I knew I mean I knew how we were doing I knew we were doing well to be taken by Terry Balsamo once Terry joined the band, we started having fun. Um, but it took really that long to start having fun. Um, <laughs> tour was actually really, really hard before that, because, I don't know, for one thing, we were being pushed really, really hard to never stop. Um, we hardly had a break within that year and a half, um, just because, you know, everyone's thinking, oh, we got to hurry, 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 and the management, you know, was definitely pressuring us and the label and everyone else. Um, so uh, we almost died, <laughs> it felt like it at least. Um, and then after Ben left the band and Terry joined the band, um, a, lot of, a lot of inner problems were healed and Terry was an easygoing guy and we liked him a lot. Yeah, I was in a band called Cold from Jacksonville, Florida. At the beginning I really had this feeling like we were on the verge of something 
it was really big because um, it was unlike anything that I had really heard before and it was coming out of us. It's so, like he'd do something and I'd go, ooh, and be inspired and do something on top of that and then he'd take that to the next step and the next and the next and the next. And it was, just kept um, getting better. Yeah, it was awesome. It was really natural. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I knew that I, I really wanted to just let go and not try to make anything of it, but something that I loved. Um, and it was cool. It wasn't like there was a lot of pressure because we'd gained a lot of respect the first time around and pretty much everybody left us alone, uh, which was great. So we spent like a full year just writing for the album. Um, and it really came out of nowhere. It wasn't like we were going, okay, let's do a song that's like this, <laughs> or I know how to get the kids liking music again. It was just um, writing for ourselves. Fallen really did so well that I was like, cool, we sold some records. Now let's make the best thing we've ever made ever and have that be the important thing. The recording of the new album was badly marred, however, when Lee's new writing partner, Terry Balsamo, suffered a major stroke, one which, thankfully, he has now made a full recovery from. Now, I'd luckily finished all my guitar stuff and had the stroke two days later, so as far as slowing down the process, it really didn't slow us down a lot. It didn't slow down the process, but at the same time, it was definitely kind of a big shock. It's a time that I'll never forget. Like it's like this epic moment. I can't believe it was a full. It was a year ago. It feels like almost like we were saying the other day. It feels like it was like ten years ago, um, <laughs> because it was just so wild. It's weird looking back on it. Um, but we're really lucky, and Terry's really lucky, and um, I guess we're a little more grateful of our lives right now. Recorded in late 2006 at the record plant in Los Angeles, the Open Door sees the return of longtime friend and producer Dave Fortman. The album's musical elements include a classically infused choir and strings on several tracks. We went to um, uh, college, actually, to record the strings in Seattle. Um, and this, there was this big, awesome kind of church room uh, that just made great natural reverb. Doesn't really go more. So I think I've just toured a lot. I, I think we want to get off tour more now than we used to. <laughs> but the album, I don't know, my, my heart's in it even more than the first one. Next year's pretty much booked, <laughs> touring, um, but we're taking it a little easier this time. Other than that, I don't know what's, what's next. I really do want to just um, play it by ear and, and do what moves us. So you're in the one or the other tour, or, right, for yeah. me at least. Yeah, me too. A career moment that you would never forget. I don't know, that's, that's hard. It all kind of ends up feeling like this big explosion, whirlwind, crazy time. I'm gonna look back on when I'm 60 and just be like, was that really me? <laughs> um, is there a moment that stands out for you? Uh, not just really one, just a lot of it's shows lot of stuff. and stuff. Yeah, we've played some amazing, huge shows that um, are a little bit burned in my brain, like Rock and Rain, Rock and Park, um, and things like that. It's a really awesome feeling. Um, winning the Grammys was pretty cool, but um, the rush definitely is a lot bigger playing a big concert, so probably be some of the shows we've played. Shows and maybe the first week of sales and all that for this record. It's cool. Part of Amy's great appeal is the degree to which young fans can identify with her. She sings as every woman, and every fan can see themselves in her. It's a subject of the fans' expectation that crops up in one song, Weight of the World. I'm a big sister. I have two little sisters and a, and a little brother that I've always felt like a big sister to. So I think, if anything, all the all the um, young women that come to our shows make me feel like I'm big sister. It's sort of like the same role I've always been, so it's not that weird. But um, it's cool. I think we've got a lot of fans from all ages, both sexes. Sort of like a big, I don't know, crazy melting pot of people, which is a good thing. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I'm. Perfect. I definitely am a flawed person, but um, at least. Yes.